Hello travelers, Boardman21 here, and today I've got a bloody bee wolf build for you, or squirrels if you will. Now I was recently asked on my last video in the comment section by fellow subscriber Ohatanuk if I would update my bleeding wolf build, and I hadn't played bleeding wolves in quite a while. The main reason for that is because the crit hit squirrels are just the most powerful build that you can do, so why would you do bleed? Well I figured, you know, it's time to update it anyway some people really like the squirrels and I found that adding bees into the build as well as the squirrels actually makes it into a very viable end game build the footage you're watching right now is in 300 corruption plus footage and then we were also able to take out Orbis at this you can do tier 3 Jura no problem tier 4 Jura I found that it's a little bugged and that's because your minions can push Orbis across or Jura across the screen which allows them to just stand in the dots which can lead to a very problematic problem with them taking too much damage so once they fix the problem with bosses being able to be pushed by attacks it should be resolved and this should be able to do tier 4 no problem but I've just found that all your minions get sucked into the dots and of course they're gonna die when they sit in that for 10 seconds at a time now this build is very fast-paced all you basically have to do is just continue to fury leap forward through all of the mobs this build is going to have great survivability. Of course, you have like the Berserker node that gives you reduced damage taken when you're at low life. You have high endurance, you have critical strike avoidance, your resistance. Then you have Warcry that's going to make you invulnerable every time it goes off for one second, as well as heal you to full health when you cast it. And you can just put that on auto cast while at the same time, all you really have to worry about is running around dodging the mechanics while your squirrels and your bees apply as much bleed as possible to the target. And in most cases, on single target they can apply over a thousand stacks again this isn't the most powerful build in terms of damage but for a bleed build it is really really fun and if you've been looking for a way to play with bees and squirrels and bleed this is going to be the build for you so let's go ahead and get into those skills for skills, I'm running Etera's Blessing, Summon Frenzy Totem, War Cry, Fury Leap, and Summon Wolf. For Etera's Blessing, we just have this so that whenever we have extra mana, whenever we take a hit and War Cry is on cooldown, that you can heal yourself. This will also, if you use it on any of your companions or minions, give them increased attack speed to apply then more bleeds. And no matter who you use it on, it will heal you a little bit, as well as give you some resistance. So we've got two points in safeguard for the elemental resistance resist and poison resist five points in ardent touch so no matter which minion you cast it on they can get 30 percent more attack speed and move speed four points in binding heal so that again no matter who you use it on you'll get a little bit of healing out of it five points in conservation to make it cheaper to use three points in improved blessing to increase the healing received from it and one point in purge so that it can cleanse ailments on the target which can be yourself for Summon Frenzy Totem, we have this to give as much attack speed as possible to all allies. After that, it gives us a little extra poison chance, a little extra melee damage. None of that really matters. All we care about is the fact that it gives as much attack speed as possible to all nearby allies that are around it. We've got 3 points in Rabidity, 3 points in Beast Style Frenzy, 5 points in Venomous Intent, 3 points in Revitalizing Totem, 3 points in Symbol of Haste, 1 point in Symbol of Selflessness, and 3 points in Warding Totem. For War Cry, this is going to do a few things for us. It's going to push back enemies away from us. It's going to, after we cast it, give us invulnerability for one second. It's also, at the same time we cast it, going to heal us for basically all of our missing life. And I'll explain how that works when we get to that node. And lastly, give our squirrels a 100% increase the bleed chance for a short duration, which you can have 100% uptime with this as long as you have some cooldown reduction on your gear. Again, we'll cover that in the gear section. So we've got one point in Staggering War, one point in Kinetic Scream, four points in Eviscerating Howl for those bleed stacks, one point in Shallow Breath to reduce the cooldown by 50%, two points in Deep War, one point in Debilitating Shout, four points in Toxic Companions to give your wolves increased bleed chance. I'm going to end up putting up the last point in here and take one point out of the Eviscerating Howl, just so we have the 100% bleed chance for them. Three points in Breath of Edera for the healing. This heals you for 300. This is also 
also increased by your healing effectiveness. I have about 150% on this build, so every time that Warcry goes off, it heals me for 750 health. That's doubled to 1500 if I'm at low life when it goes off. So basically, you're going to be at full health after you Warcry, as well as be invincible. It also, with one point invigorate, will heal your allies, and then one point in Juggernaut, so that we are invulnerable after Warcry. With our cooldown reduction we have on this build, which is just one tier 7 fix on the belt, we're under 4 seconds, so they have 100% uptime of the bleed, and about 25% of the time you'll be invincible due to the Juggernaut node. For Fury Leap, we have this set up so that we're giving our minions a little bit extra damage. It's also going to have them leap with us. It's going to be our movement skill, and then it's going to have a ton of vines also be procced, which then, since they are also minions, will have bleed chance capable of applying extra bleeds to any enemy in their reach. So we've got three points in Panther Strike, two points in Ambush Predator, four points in Rise, four points in Poisonous Thicket, so that you're going to have vines that are going to be where you land and where you took off from. Then we've got five points in Warrior's Entrance for that global melee damage. Not a huge thing but the one point in frenzy onslaught will give them all frenzy so that your bees and all of your companions will have increased attack speed and one point in pack leader so that your companions will leap with you to kind of hurry the fight up speed run through those echoes a little faster and then for the summon wolf which we do have plus three levels to two go from the herald of the Siri, the, the squirrel helm that gives us plus two levels and then with the staff we get plus one to all minion skills so that's where the third one comes from again you can get lp on the Herald of the Scurry and get up to four more points to be able to use for it, which would be really nice, but we didn't put that into this build. For the wolves, we want them to have as much bleed as well as increase our maximum companions. So we got two points in Lupine Endurance, two points in Wolf and Recovery, one point in Earthborn, one point in Pack Hunters, one point in Canine Agility, four points in Surrey Claws for that melee bleed chance for the wolves, four points in Patient Hunters so they do a ton more damage over time as well as have physical penetration, four points in Crippling Wounds so they have increased bleed duration, one point in Safety in Numbers so that we summon all of them at once, and then this opens up our Amulet slot so we don't have to have the Claw or the Fang on since we're basically already over to it, and then three points in On the Hunt so they have an additional attack speed to apply those bleeds even faster for passives i've got 27 points in the primalist base class with six in gift to the wilderness five in hunter's restoration six in primal medicine five in hunter's emanuation again this uh, hit that you're going to do is going to be with fury leap you're going to hit enemies with it that's what will proc it giving you that health back and then giving the minions an extra 55 percent damage and then five points in berserker so that you will take less damage when you are at low life this is a huge boost it really helps kind of like endurance does so that you can take really big hits then for shaman i got five points all five in sky warrior for that increased minion damage this also reduces the cooldown for fury leap we got 24 points in the druid with seven Seven points in Shitness Plating, seven in Claws of the Forest, five points in Thicket of Thorns, and five points in Wind of the Leaves, which is going to give you that minion attack speed, which is really nice for the bees and for your squirrels. And then 55 points in our Master Class, the Beastmaster, with eight of them in your scene Strength, five in Boar Heart, five in Porcine Constitution, two in Call of the Pack, eight in The Chase, eight points in Life of the Wilderness, eight points in Avian Shelter, ten points in Viper Fangs to give your companions increased melee attack speed and then the last point in nature's embrace to have that plus one maximum companion so that we can have up to the 10 squirrels instead of only eight for the character sheet, as you can see in all the gameplay, I don't quite have all of my resistances capped. I'm missing a little lightning, a little cold, and a little necrotic. The lightning and cold is covered when I use Eterra's Blessing, so if I do that every four seconds, I can have that completely covered. I am a little shy on necrotic, though. We have a bit of armor. I do need to still hunt down some blessings for this build and get the armor, both increased and flat that would give me a bit more armor and then for defense our endurance almost capped the critical strike avoidance is capped and that's where a lot of our survivability comes from so that especially once we get down to that endurance threshold especially low life with the berserker node it starts reducing the damage we're taking by a huge amount and can offset most one-shot mechanics in the game for the minion stats you can see we have about 300 percent global minion damage and we're sitting at almost 800 percent minion physical damage most of that coming 
from the two-handed staff rule, which is a tier seven. You can get up to, I believe, 450-ish percent from that, which is huge, and the reason why you're going to want to go for it. For the character sheet, blessings, idols, the main thing that you really want to look for for endgame or for this build to really come together is that you're going to want a LP doublet of Onyx tool. Now you don't have to have it, but you can get a massive amount of minion chance to bleed on hit on it. You just need a one LP and a really good roll. You can get these with two or three LP. They're pretty common. So with that being said, you should be able to get a minion chance to bleed on hit rolled onto it. The Keeper's Gloves are not necessary for this build. We don't have them always active, but it is nice when you do get up to eight more bees fighting with you. That's a lot more bleed, especially for single target. But again, we don't do a whole lot of melee attacks, so you're not always going to have them up, but it is nice when it happens. A normal pair of gloves will work just fine. You don't have to have these. You are required to have the Herald of the Scurry to have the squirrels. Otherwise, you'll just have the wolves, the wolves helm, the Artem... Legacy does not come with bleed for minions on hit. The Herald of the Scurry does for the squirrel, so this is a big boost of damage for you. I definitely recommend farming for this and a LP doublet of Honest Tool before getting into this. The other thing that you want to put on this is the two handed staff because you can get a huge amount of minion physical damage with it and it also gives you plus one to minion skills, which helps in the wolf tree, giving them a little more to play with in there. For idols, you're going to want anything that gives you for the one by force is going to be plus bees per 10 seconds we do have two of them on this build again that's not every 10 seconds you get that set amount they tend to spawn out like one every second which is really nice with two of them we're getting them a little under one second every bee as you can see in the footage right now they're coming out which is really nice so it's not like they all come at once uh, a one shot mechanic comes in destroys them all and then you have to wait 10 seconds for more so they're just kind of always coming out which is really nice and then of course as much minion chance to bleed on hit as you can get that you can get that for the suffix on the one by threes if you don't have the b idols or even a b idol like this one that hybrid world with it is really this is kind of the perfect one you want and then on the vertical stacks you can also get minion melee chance to bleed on hit and of course that minion melee chance to bleed on hit on both the idols and on the honest stroll is going to apply to the bees so it allows them to apply a lot of stacks which is really really nice and then for blessings again i don't really have what you want i need to change out the resolve of humanity for critical strike avoidance so i can get it off my gear and we're going to end up changing the grand embers and the age of winter timelines we're going to change those to flat armor and increased armor and then for how to play this build, really, you just run around and all you have to do is leap around and they're going to apply all the stacks of bleed. Even without me doing anything right now, you can see we're sitting at a thousand stacks of bleed on the training domain. It's absolutely ridiculous how much bleed they can have. Again, you could get even more. You can get the minion chance to bleed on hit also on the helm. So like I have a one LP here, I could try and roll that on this helm to get even more bleed out of them. It's absolutely ridiculous how much bleed you can get. So I do recommend just trying to get as much as you want, but after that, that's all you need. The War Cry and the Summon Frenzy Totem to make them attack faster are not needed, but they will really help with that single target damage. I can go ahead and throw those on. I put them on auto cast. You can look up the guide for that. It's just the numlock trick on the keypad. When you want the squirrels to have a little extra attack speed, you can throw down a scurry and rage. And then just leaping in is going to give them all frenzy as well as get the vines in there. And your damage is going to get even more insane. We're doing about 500k ticks on the training dummy right now. But that's going to be it for the build. Again, this was asked by a subscriber on YouTube. If you have a build in mind that you'd like to see me do or update that I haven't done in a while, I am doing this full time again, so I have plenty of time to do it. Feel free to ask in the comments, and I'll get to it as quick as I can. I'm going to go ahead and leave you guys with some gameplay. Let me know how the build goes for you.